Welcome to the weekly worship of the First Church of Squantum. My name is Doug Gray. I have the great honor and privilege of getting to work and minister with this bunch of loving people here in beautiful downtown Squantum. It is a great day outside. It started misty, but you can see that it is uh, a little hazy, lovely. It's a fabulous day in the 50s, and I'm glad that we get to share a little bit of it together. We have some great worship ahead of us. It's the third Sunday of Advent, and we're talking about the gifts of Christmas. Today, peace. Enjoy. Could we join in our call to worship? Let's read responsively. Here we go. The Gospel of Luke tells us that on the night Jesus was born, A great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. Why do we light three candles today? We light the first candle for hope that comes into our lives because of the birth of Jesus Christ. We light the second candle for the love come down to be God with us. Today we light the third candle for peace and thank God for filling our lives with the good news. As we hurry toward Christmas, we could easily pass through the Christmas season without really hearing the good news of peace sung by the angels long ago. Yet when the last pages appear on our calendars, men, women, children, all kneel at the shrine of peace. Hard and hopeless some may be, but we all still hope for peace. And so every year God speaks to the hearts of those who will receive it. Peace on earth. Goodwill to all. Well, it's Christmas time, and I thought we would sing one of the great Christmas carols today. Could we sing together? Away in a manger? Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing. A baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky, and stay by my cradle till morn, morning is nigh. Near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in night and care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Can we pray together our opening prayer? Let's pray. Forgive us, Father, that we have not heard your words of peace, or having heard, have not let it change us. Help us to listen to you today with new ears 
and willing hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do you remember Christmas as a child? What was it like to hardly be able to wait until you could go downstairs, go into the space where you would open presents. Now, many of us were blessed to, to have presents under the tree. Not true for everyone, and yet that anticipation, it was there, wasn't it? What will happen? That sense of wonder can still be ours at Christmas time. Our dreams now are grown-up dreams. More about the time, less about the things. I find I am grateful even for the small things. Being able to smile at someone I care about being able to get up and do a kindness for someone who is nearby. Seeing the look of joy as something they never expected happened. This sense of impending gratitude and wonder is part of what leads me at Christmas time to fill up with thanksgiving and and when I am drawn into this counting of my blessings, I, I find myself drawn to giving to God. Now, maybe that's true for you today. If so, I want to encourage you to head to our website, www.firstchurchsquantum.org. You can click on the donate button and and express your joy and wonder and gratitude for all that God has given you. If that's not your bag today, if what you really need to do is receive grace today, then by all means, grace means grace. And I'm so glad that you could be blessed by the presence of Jesus Christ today and to feel the Holy Spirit come down upon you. Thank you. For our next song, I thought we might sing Your Grace Finds Me. It's by Matt Redman and Jonas Myron. It has a, a great song, a great message uh, about grace. Well, maybe peace, too, finding us. Let's sing it together. There in a newborn cry There in the light of every sunrise There in the shadows of this life Your great grace It's there on the mountain top There in the everyday and the mundane there in the sorrow and the dancing, your great grace, oh such grace. From the creation to the cross, now from the cross into eternity, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. There on the wedding day There in the weeping by the grave 
side. There in the very breath we breathe, your great grace. Same for the rich and poor. Same for the saint and for the sinner. Enough for this whole wide world, your great grace. Oh, such grace. From the creation to the cross and there from the cross into eternity Your grace finds me Yes, your grace finds me and there in the darkest night of the soul and there in the sweetest songs of victory your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. Your great grace, oh, such grace. Your great grace, oh, such grace. From the creation to the cross. There from the cross into eternity, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. There in the darkest night of the soul, there in the sweetest songs of victory, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. Your great grace, oh, such grace. Your great grace, oh, such grace. Yes, your grace finds me. Yes, your grace finds me. Old Testament lesson today comes from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah was writing in the 700s going into the late 600s BCE. He was writing for the people of his time and yet he is also writing for us today. Let's listen for the Word of God. Chapter 11, beginning verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, meaning a goat, not a child. The calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. 
They will not hurt or destroy on all my mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Amen. Turning to the New Testament, we'll be reading from the Gospel of John today. John chapter 14, and then we'll also read from John chapter 20, Jesus talked a lot about peace. These are two of the really important passages about peace. The first, chapter 14, happens on the night on which Jesus was betrayed as he's sitting around the table with his friends. In chapter 14, verse 22, we hear Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us, show yourself to us, and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine but the fathers who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And then skipping ahead, we're going to go to chapter 20. It's that first Easter Sunday, and the disciples are still freaked out and fearful, but there are hints of joy, starting in chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews... Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so, I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Amen. Peace is one of those words that sound great, and everyone wants it. But we get easily confused about what it means and how to get it. Well, take the story of a four-year-old and a six-year-old who one day gave their mom a houseplant. They had used their own money to buy it, and she was thrilled the older of them said with a sad face, There was a bouquet at the flower shop that we wanted to give you. It was really pretty, but it was too expensive. 
it had a ribbon on it that said, rest in peace. And we thought it would be just perfect since you are always asking for a little peace so that you can rest. <laughs> well, that was a close call. Almost bought something maybe his mom might not have appreciated, but I think many of us think of peace as something we can only have after we die. In fact, I have even heard people say, I'll rest when I'm dead. So how is it that Jesus promises peace to his disciples? What does it mean that Isaiah prophesied that Jesus would be called the Prince of Peace. As we look around the world today, and it seems peace is impossible, we wonder, can we even have peace in our own lives? Most people will tell you that peace is what you have when you don't have violence. As it turns out, the Bible's idea of peace is much bigger and much more interesting. The Bible's idea of peace is not based on what you don't have, violence and war, for example, and more about what you do have, good relationships, enough to eat, a roof over your head, a job that allows you to take care of your family, hope and opportunity. We long for peace. In fact, I think we were made for peace. For example, peace is having a good relationship. I, I remember one evening years ago when I said something that I shouldn't have to my mom. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought about how I had hurt her, the more upset I got. In fact, I, I couldn't call her because it was so late. And so I was not at peace all night long. I had trouble sleeping. As soon as it was okay for me to call her. I called her. I just couldn't imagine going through my day without trying to put things right with her. And I'm really glad I did make that call. I, I, I could say to her that I was sorry. And she was gracious. And she forgave me. And we cried together. And, and we reminded each other that we loved each other. And we had peace. Most especially, real peace is only possible when we are right with God. The classic story is told of George Buttrick, the former chaplain at Harvard, who recalled that students would come into his office, plop down in a chair, and declare, I don't believe in God. Buttrick would give this disarming reply. Well, please sit down and tell me what kind of God you don't believe in. I probably don't believe in that God either. Sometimes people don't believe in God because they have intellectual issues with believing God could exist. But more commonly, I find that it's because people are angry or upset with God or feeling guilty about something they know God wouldn't want or wishing God were closer but not sure how to begin. And Buttrick would talk with these students about Jesus, the Jesus whose grace and love and sacrifice seem to repair all our false assumptions. Paul would write in his letter to the Christians in Colossae, For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him 
to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Jesus came to bring peace. But real peace, the Hebrew word is shalom. Isn't that a wonderful, rich, full sound, shalom? Real peace, shalom, rests not just on some of us having good relationships, enough to eat, meaningful work, a living wage, hope and opportunity, but when a nation has them, when everyone feels secure, hopeful and cared for. It's something Nelson Mandela understood and sought to live out. You know, he died about seven years ago this month. Our nation is seriously lacking in peace. So many have wealth, but we don't have security. Nelson Mandela said, a fundamental concern for others in our individual and community lives would go a long way in making the world the better place we so passionately dream of. We have freedom, but no vision. Nelson Mandela said, for to be free is not merely to cast off one's own chains, but to live in a way that respects and enhances the freedom of others. We have great ideas, but no progress. Mandela writes, if you want to make peace with your enemy, you have to work with your enemy. And then they become your partners. These are not just Nelson Mandela's ideas. Jesus taught them too. And Mandela learned and lived by them. Real peace, shalom, is something for which we long and we work. It will take all of us. The story is told of a train traveling through the night in a very violent rainstorm. The lightning was flashing and the sky was blinding. The rain hitting the windows was deafening and the wind pushing at the train was frightening as it rocked the train from side to side. When the lightning flashed and lit up the darkness, the passengers could see the water rising along the tracks. And this created terror in their minds. Several passengers noted that through all the noise and the lightning and the wind, one of the passengers, a little girl, seemed to be at perfect peace. The adults, the adult passengers, they couldn't figure out what was going on, how she could be that calm. Finally, one passenger asked her, how is it that you can be so calm when all the rest of us are so worried about what could happen? And the little passenger smiled and said, My daddy's the engineer. Christmas reminds us that God is our engineer, that God is in charge. And that peace starts with trust. Trust based on love. So what's holding us back? Perhaps it is as Nelson Mandela writes. Our deepest fear 
is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are born, we are all meant to shine as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. For me, that's a peace worth living for. Of course, Jesus says it even more simply. Peace be with you. Amen. As we go from this place, could we pray for each other as we go? Let's pray. You'll find the unison benediction on your screen. Could we do it together? Here we go. Hope comes in the darkness. Love comes among us and within us if we are open to God. Peace becomes the calm center in the storm of life. Then we are transfigured to be like Jesus, our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. So shine through us, Lord, that others might see you in us. Give thanks and be drawn to you. Go in peace. Go with God. Amen.